Hello, welcome to Pecan Corner. I'm Tina, and today I'm going to make hamburger dill pickles. Got enough uh, enough cucumbers here, uh, along with the ones I've been have picked earlier and been saving up, and so we'll get them going. All right, I'm back now. Then um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm basically just using a variation on the Ball Blue Book. Um, pickling recipe for hamburger deals. Um, I'm using a slight variation and I'll tell you what that is going forward. I, the recipe calls for four pounds of, of uh, pickling cucumbers but I only have, and these are what pickling cucumbers look like, they're very different from the ones that we buy in the store to eat, but you can make these out of those that you buy in the store if that's all that you can get. Um, so I'm, I only have two pounds, so I'm going to half this recipe, and I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm going to process these in my, with my sous vide, um, so I can use low temp processing and not have to uh, stand there and, and hold my candy thermometer and watch it every, every second to make sure it doesn't go under 180. So my sous vide is heating up now. And it's full up enough of water so that the, the jars will be completely immersed when I put them when I put them in. And uh, so uh, the first the recipe calls for one quart plus one half cup of water. One quart is four uh, cups. So half of a quart is two cups. So I'm going to use uh, one cup. Two cups and and then one quarter cup of water. There we go. All right, and uh, one quart of vinegar. Which so two cups of vinegar, and I'm using white vinegar. You can use um, cider vinegar if that's what you have, but it needs to be five percent acidity. There we go. I'm going to use three tablespoons of canning and pickling salt. The reason canning and pickling salt is important is because it doesn't have iodine in it. It doesn't have extra minerals in it like pink salt does. So there's nothing in it to interfere with the way it preserves the food. And, and salt in a pickling recipe is going to be for preservative. So that you can say, oh, it's got too much salt. But uh, this one's not a salty pickle. This is a very sour pickle. So if you make my grandfather's dill pickles, Papa's dill pickles, they're an extremely salty pickle. They use a lot of salt uh, for the preservative. This one uses vinegar. So I want three tablespoons of salt. And I really shouldn't hold that over that. I should hold it over something else so that if I spill it, I won't overdo the salt. And three, because the original recipe calls for six, and I'm divided it in half. Okay, there we go. All right, now, then. all right, that's our basics. Now then, those are the things that are important for preservation. At this point, we can add whatever spices we want to, and they're not going to they're not going to hurt it. You can't change the amount of salt. You can't change the amount of vinegar. Uh, you could reduce the water if you want it even more sour. Uh, but you can't add more water and, and have it uh, work in preservation. Um, I'm going to use dill seed because I can never get fresh dill, although this, this calls for it. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put these this in the uh, these these seasonings in my jars. I've got mustard seed here and dill seed. And I like a little turmeric, and I'm actually going to put the turmeric in the in the brine here because I, I like just a little dab to make them a little bit yellow looking. So I'm using about maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, half of a quarter teaspoon here. There we go. Um, I don't want them to be real real yellow, but I want them to have that little yellow bit of color that we're used to seeing on a hamburger dill pickle. All right, now then, I've got that going. I'm going to bring that to a boil or a simmer, and I'm going to let it simmer for 
uh, 10 minutes while, my, while I'm working on the rest of the pickles. Okay, now then, I'm going to uh, uh, slice off the blossom end of these. And because these are homegrown, I want to be sure they're not uh, bitter. So I'm going to take a little taste of each pickle that I slice to make sure. Because a bitter cucumber can't be fixed. Pickling it, it'll still be bitter. I try to buy varieties that won't that are guaranteed not to get bitter. But it's something that can happen. Um, especially in real hot weather, which is what we're having right now. Sure, I'm getting the blossom in here. They say there's something in the blossom end, some kind of enzymes that will um, cause the pickles to get uh, soft, or the cucumbers rather. And that's why you trim that off. So far, so good. You don't need to ask me how you'll know if you've got a bit of pickle or a bit of cucumber. You will know the instant you put that um, that cucumber to your mouth. You will know. And then you'll say, oh, that's what she means by bitter. It's quinine bitter. Okay, those are all sweet, so we're good. So now I'm going to put on my, these leather gloves may look a little bit dirty, but that's, that's, they're not. They're just stained from food because the only thing they've ever been used for is food. And I use them for using my, my mandolin. Okay. And I'm just going to slice these off with a medium slice. You can slice them by hand. You can slice them in your uh, food processor if you have one. Either way, it doesn't matter. Get down to the small end. Whoops. Just going to put that in there. Or you can do those with a knife when they get down too short. You can also, I've got this, but it won't work with those. But you just saw why I wear a, a, a thick suede glove. This is not a smooth leather, this is suede leather. So, this uh, knife is not going to cut through it. Paul was telling me the other day I need a chain mail glove to use, and that'd be nice, but this is working fine for me. I will be back when I get these all sliced. Alrighty, now then. Now I'm going to just move my cucumbers into my drawers. Let's see how many will go in them. not adding my spices yet to the jars because I don't know how many jars I'll get and I don't want to fill my jars up with spices that I that I waste <laughs> or have to pour back out again. I think only four jars but I pulled out six and got them all prepared and sterilized just in case. Really, four jars is about all we'll use in a in a year. A couple of quarts. There we go. Yeah, four jars is what this is going to make. So this would make two quarts. So the full recipe would make uh, four quarts. And these are pints. A pint is half a quart. Now then, there we go. Now, let's uh, let's put our 
I'm just using mustard seed and dill seed in this. And uh, I'm going to use a, I like a lot of dill, there we go. I like a lot of dill seed. I'm going to use a whole teaspoon of dill seed in each jar because I like the dill flavor in hamburger dills. And like I said, this is a real sour uh, pickle, so this is much more like uh, the standard hamburger dills that you buy at the store. Mustard seed, let's see what the recipe calls for. Recipe calls for three and a half teaspoons. Um, and, and so half of that would be one and three quarter teaspoons. So about half a teaspoon in each jar and this is my quarter measure so let me put two of those there we go there's also some recipes and i'm going to try one one of these days there's one that calls for using powdered mustard in it and it's a real sour real sour pickle and uh so i'm going to try making some of those if i get a, a, a big supply of cucumbers all right my water has been uh, has been simmering here. So now I'm going to pour it up and seal up the jars. Out of paper towel, so I'm going to use a wet, clean washcloth to wipe off the tops of my jars with. The, the old pickle recipe that my, my papa's pickles uh, for the old salty garlic deals that, that I made before, that's one of my first, that was an early uh, film that I did when I was just getting started with my channel. And uh, you can tell a lot of differences uh, between then and now <laughs> uh, with uh, how I do things and how I did it then and the things, I, the things I normally do but forgot to do for the camera. You know how that goes. Um, because when, and so, I'm trying to remember what things, uh, pe uh, several people called me out for not cleaning off the tops of my jars uh, when I did that video, and of course normally when I'm doing them, I do, but I was, I was so uh, um, trying to keep everything in mind to, to film that, uh, uh, that I forgot to do things that I normally would do, like boiling up my water first. There we go. Okay. Exactly. Now let me get my get my trusty uh, chopstick here, my poker poker downer, to be sure I get all of the air bubbles out. I don't want any air bubbles in this. Now then, now let's clear it off again. Okay, look at our lid. I went last year and bought all new rings. I, I found some sales and I bought all new rings and I got rid of all those old rusty, worn out rings. I had painted them the year before, uh, but with pressure canning, you really wreck your rings. Um, and since I have to put uh, uh, vinegar in my water for, for any kind of canning, uh, because we have such uh, so much minerals in our water, um, it really does a number on the rings. So you just have to every once in a while. So I just went through and I bought them in kind of in bulk, and so it saved me some money. So it's nice to be able to can with nice uh, uh, new rings. But, okay, now we're going to put these into our sous vide. I'm going to move the camera over here and let you see what I'm doing. All right. Now then, my instructions for uh, the, the low temperature processing is comes out of So Easy to Preserve, which is the cookbook from um, the National Center for Home Food Preservation. But you can find those instructions on your website. You can use this for cucumber pickles. Don't use it for uh, reduced sodium pickles. So if they've got to have the full level of salt in them. Now then. 
I don't need a rack in the bottom of this since it's being not sitting on a stove to be heated. The heat's coming from the soap sous vide machine. I'm going to set these down in here and then I'm going to watch for the temperature to come back up to between 180 to 185. I want it to stay at 180 or not below for um, 30 full minutes. And so with putting these jars in there, even though they are hot filled, it's dropped my temperature to 154. So now the temperature's got to come back up. And when it does, I'll start my timer for 30 minutes. And then I'll see y'all again. All right, and now I've pulled them out and they're sitting here cooling. The jars will will pop and seal as they as they cool. But uh, they're very attractive. And uh, just plain old regular um, hamburger deals. I didn't use any calcium chloride or anything like that to keep them crisp. I just processed them at 180 degrees for uh, 30 minutes. And uh, that's it. These are real simple to make and, and make a really good, uh, good sour pickle.